All right, everybody, how's it going? Welcome back. For those that joined us uh, five minutes ago for Mike's previous um, presentation, now on to round two, and this one's going to be a great one. So welcome to the Phys Ed Summit. Uh, my name is Colin Brooks, and I am your moderator, and I am uh, glad to be here with you and to be in this hangout here with Mike. So um, just thank you so much for being part of the Phys Ed Summit today. We're humbled by the, the amount of outpouring um, that's involved with the Phys Ed Summit. It is a fun day. Um, it is live and engaged, and we're, we're so happy to be part of it and to help run the show. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time talking, so don't worry about that. Now, a couple things. I forgot this last time. So remember to put in um, at the end of the Phys Ed Summit, just give us some feedback. We have a, um, a feedback form uh, on our website, so that would be great. Um, also, badges. Oh, got to mm. love those badges. I love seeing them pop up in uh, social media a lot, so keep earning those badges. Keep passing those levels and so forth and then afterwards I'll talk a little bit about Flipgrid so uh, with that being said I'm going to give it over to the man the myth the legend here Mike he's gonna talk to us a little bit about his uh, plicker magnet so Mike take it away buddy all right thank you Colin. hello everybody and Colin thank you for moderating um, glad that you didn't say that last time in gamification because we would have gone over for sure. So <laughs> gave, me a, gave me a little extra time for this back to back. There you go. Um, so I'm Mike Genicola. I've been teaching for 20 years now, K to six PE and five to six health. And I'm on the East coast in Connecticut. And it's just been a, a great experience on the last couple of years. I got into social media, uh, wasn't really involved before that. And uh, really changed everything for me. So uh, Plickers was one thing that I discovered, and then you know, uh, we'll get into the other stuff soon. So I do have a nice uh, presentation put together. I'm hoping that this will, for the people that already know what they're doing, it'll help out a little bit more entry level for some people that have no idea, maybe even what Plickers are. So I'm going to share a little bit on uh, the basics first. So hopefully there's something for everyone in this. So let me share it out. And I already mentioned um, in the last session, I'm pretty laid back. So if you have questions at any time, uh, Colin will definitely interrupt me and, and let me know. So pretty flexible. All right. So Plickers Magnets, uh, kind of a new idea the last six months. And let's go into, first of all, you know, what are Plickers? Uh, some of you, I've noticed that on social media, there are questions about Plickers, maybe being confused with Plickers magnets. And uh, first of all, you have Plickers, which are, uh, it's basically these cards with the, with the code on them that students will hold up and they're oriented. So it's A, B, C, or D that's up. And they will answer questions as a quick form of checkup. It's a free app. Um, the cards are even free to download if you want to, but you can pay $20, I think it is, on Amazon to buy their official cards, which is really one of the only ways that they make money. So uh, I know that they're, they're still doing well just by selling those. Um, you have fast, quick, easy, real-time information, checking in on how the students are doing, uh, which is really powerful stuff. You can see if kids are lost at any time and maybe review something that you would have uh, continued on with and maybe missed if you didn't check in once in a while. Uh, really just needs your own phone or device. Students don't need to have devices at all, just the cards. And really you get the answers from all of them within seconds. Um, they can scan across an entire gym, which is pretty awesome stuff. And uh, they all have their own numbers. So one student would be a Plickers card number seven. And then in the next class that comes in, a different student would be Plickers card number seven. So you can have an, pretty much an unlimited number of students and the regular set goes up to, I think you can have 63 kids per class. So just have the cards put away in a certain spot. And when you want the kids to answer questions, they go get their cards. And really uh, it's, it's an amazing tool in and of itself. On classroom teachers, if they have smart boards, they have something called clickers that they can use where the kids will push a button uh, to uh, like literally a clicker that they would hold, but it does cost quite a bit of money. So most districts uh, won't pay for it. All right. So when you're doing regular clickers, here is the teacher view. So you can see the students' names uh, in the upper left of the picture. They green means that they answered the question correctly. 
Uh, red would mean not correctly. Uh, if there's no color, that means either they're absent or they didn't answer the question and you wanna make sure that they're holding the card the right way so you didn't miss them. It tells you immediately who got what right and wrong, uh, what percentage of the class was successful. So it's a really powerful tool, tool to show you instantly uh, where everyone's at with the learning. Uh, now, when you first start with something like Plickers, uh, you want to make sure, just say, everyone hold up A, and just make sure your class can even just uh, put the card up with the correct letter. Make sure that they're not getting an answer wrong because um, they don't know how to use the cards, as opposed to really not knowing the information. So it takes a week or two to practice with them. I know people have done it all the way down to kindergarten level um, successfully. So they, they get it. It just takes a while for kindergarten to, I would wait a few months personally to let you get them to learn how to walk in straight lines and find that mysterious thing known as personal space. All right, so quick form of check-in. They are fairly anonymous. Um, the identification is really small for A, B, C, D, and they all look different. So the kids really mostly wouldn't know um, what, the, what the person next to them is holding up. I mean, if they were standing shoulder to shoulder, they might be able to see, but on the back, um, the little cheater A, B, C, D for the kids is kind of uh, light, so they really can't see it too well. You really don't need much tech, as we talked about. And the best thing about this is that you can archive the answers and collect the, dot, the data and put it in like an Excel form for you to look at. So that's something that's new this year from Plickers. So it would be something like this, where you'd be able to see on the different activities or quizzes or whatever you want them to be, uh, it could be an exit ticket question. You can see uh, who did what over a period of time, which is really powerful stuff. I really, I really enjoyed using it over the years. All right, so how did I come up with the idea of combining magnets with clickers? Well, thank you all for asking. Uh, kind of an interesting journey. Uh, first, you had Sarah who came up with this cool analogy that she got from somewhere else, but she shared it out on social media where you have these cupcakes and the levels of learning. So level one, really just basic, not getting it. Level, uh, level two, now you can maybe uh, do a skill. Level three, now you're adding frosting to that great cupcake. Now maybe they can do crossovers or uh, dribble to a spot and then shoot. If we're looking at basketball, for example, and uh, for level four, they can understand that. We're going to apply this more in, in a game situation. And it just kind of gives them a neat visualization of uh, where their learning is at, which uh, inspired Joey Fight, who everyone knows by now, as a physical educator, to kind of come up with the levels in his own uh, situation up in Canada, where he started using... Uh, the magnets themselves with numbers on them and he shared it out on kids keeping track of their learning so they would on one paper kind of indicate on the left what they're working on and they can all choose what they wanted to so you got some um, voice and choice uh, so clickers 11 would be working on the racket pulled up and way back things like that and then on the other side they would show him if they were getting it based on the rubrics that are there, they're small and hard to see, but uh, basically you have the four rubrics for not yet all the way up to wow. And I really loved the idea of having the students take ownership uh, of their learning and where they were at. And now I tried it for a while and I kind of ran into uh, the same problem as most people where like, well, how do you collect this data? So Joey had an amazing idea that really, um, stem from other good ideas as well. And it's really just pushed out um, basically where we are today. So it was like, hey, that's pretty amazing. But how do I collect this data? Like really I'm running through it for a couple of weeks. And unless you write it down, which really who's going to do that with classes in between, I really had to collect that information somehow. And no idea how it happened, but I really thought of miniaturizing the clickers and just putting them right on top of the magnets. Um, and then basically from that point on, I had to come up with a prototype and figure out how I was gonna do this. So here was my, uh, the initial prototype design for the Plickers magnets, which 
Uh, we also hashtag Plagnets. Uh, really not the something that's easy to uh, share on social media. And I think Joey really doesn't like Plagnets itself, but it's kind of picked up steam, unfortunately, for folks that don't like it. But here is my prototype. Ugly is all get out. Uh, basically, I just bought numbered magnets off Amazon and printed out. I think it was through Comic Life that I created them originally, printed them out real small, cut them out, double-sided taped them right onto all the, the magnets and hand wrote them myself. And they are absolutely just not aesthetically pleasing to look at, but they worked and they worked very well. So I, from there, started testing them out in class. Um, there are, as I shared out, the best thing about this is we have the collected folder, the PE shared folder of everyone's designs and templates pretty much where you can pick and choose uh, what you would like to have them be for you. Um, you know, I started with the A, the one, two, three, four, instead of A, B, C, D. Unfortunately in Plickers, uh, let me go back and show you again. Unfortunately, when I put one, two, three, four, you just have to know on the app that it's still gonna say A, B, C, D. You know, I've talked to them about maybe having it be customizable so you can edit what it would be in the Flickers app. And they're discussing it now, but you, you never know if it'll, if it'll, it'll change. So if I'm on a standards-based grading and four is the best, and I consider A the best in the letters, I just had to say, you know, uh, uh, an A is a four. So you just mentally have to know that going in because the app isn't going to change. And it's only going to, even with Joey's system with the wow, it's still going to show just you know, A, B, C, D on the screen. So we have these cool designs. Someone put regular clickers on a neat little background. You have folks that put them into buttons and had a magnet glued on the back, which was one of the first designs that came out after uh, my prototype. The coolest thing from that point was people getting the number, the clickers number inside the middle of the code uh, without affecting the scanning at all, which saved a lot of space on the outside, which was a, a really cool next step. I thought I really uh, thought that was phenomenal. Um, and then, you know, we had Joey's design, and this was from Tanner Roos, who uh, put everything together into one. I, I consider this to be like the perfect Plickers magnet. You have the student number. Um, maybe I would have it in the center if possible, but you have the different levels got it wow not yet you have a b c d and one two three four um and that pretty much lets you do anything that's the most versatile clickers magnet that you have so you can do anything with that uh, it's, it's probably my favorite design um, and it kind of stemmed from joey's so joey here came up with um, his four levels and the number was on the outside and of course he went through his whole uh, on the blog how to create them with he just got so many people crafting. It was it was pretty funny, actually. You have uh, hot gluing the magnet onto a wooden coin, uh, printing out the the sticker for the front to get it on there. He would use Mod Podge, which is like a clear coating um, to seal it, the Plickers uh, magnet so that they can't be harmed by the students, kind of like laminating in a way. So really got a lot of people doing that, which was really neat to see. And then on the on his board, he has uh, the students, the reminder of what their numbers are, and the kids keeping track of whatever skill they're working on during that lesson. And at the end of class, he would scan it, um, and that was pretty much it. So it's really a, a neat system. I'm gonna go through all the different uses here soon. So these are all different designs, and there's many more. Uh, we'll go into a couple more unique ones next. So cool thing, uh, Wendy Jones had the idea, and I had seen it before, but she really pushed it out and went through with it. They have magnetic paper sheets. So she just basically printed the whatever Plickers template design that she wanted right onto these magnetic sheets. And then she just cut them out and they were ready to use, squared, or I think she, hers were square. Um, she liked to have it so you can orient it that way. So you print them right out and you're good to go without much work at all. So that's definitely the easiest way to do it. Um, they are pretty thin. However, um, 
I, I've been told that there a lot of people use them outside, so they are sturdy. Uh, now, Bavo recently shared this with me. He just basically bought flat magnets and put the uh, design right on top of them and just cut them out, which is not all that different than the printing of the paper, but the printing is obviously a little bit easier. Now, what's neat about this is you could actually have something on the opposite side if you wanted to as well, maybe two different designs or uh, maybe the student numbers on the other side. So it does open up some other possibilities. So it's really been a wonderful uh, journey seeing all the different ideas that people came up with for different templates and how they would use them. Uh, they're so incredibly versatile. So um, also, how are you going to put these to use in the gym? Like what surface the most uh, common one is having a magnetic whiteboard so i was lucky enough to have one already and my principal got me a second one last year because uh, she knows i'm pretty crazy and have some weird ideas and luckily she supports me and all of them so i did get uh, magnetic whiteboards put in and that's obviously the easiest way to go about it now if you don't have that and you do have metal doors somewhere in the gym uh, you could use them as well I know I just spoke to uh, Seth Martin the other day and he started getting magnetic paint onto like a, a cardboard surface or a plywood and uh, uses them that way. Now I've, I've been told that, you know, they, it's not the strongest magnetic surface, but you'd have to get either pretty strong magnets or maybe tilt it back a little bit. Or uh, if you're using like the paper, I mean, the uh, magnetic paper magnets, they would stick pretty well. So that's definitely something that you could do. I know people have even painted an entire wall uh, like that and, in a gym and made it more magnetic. Uh, you can also get magnetic sheets. They have just thin magnetic uh, sheets of metal at Lowe's or Home Depot, and you could maybe command strip it up on a wall or like this person here did in the photo that I found where they just covered it right and framed it right inside of a regular uh, whiteboard or a frame, which is pretty cool. So there's many different options. Um, so you shouldn't be held back because maybe you don't have a magnetic whiteboard. If you can uh, think of other ways, definitely keep the options open. All right. So uh, Colin, is there anything in there before I continue on? Um. Yes, there's you know there's a lot a lot of people are answering questions for other people. Are people uh, swearing? Is this bad? Are we causing anarchy here? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you you're causing the exact opposite. <laughs> there's a lot of people listening to you right now. You're doing awesome. Um, so yeah, I like let just you just keep rolling, man. And yeah. um, if I see like a a really like specific question that you could answer right now that maybe others uh, couldn't uh, let me know. But yeah, everybody okay. keep the questions going. I'm, I'm trying to keep up. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I threw out a bunch of information. The there. I didn't keep going if, uh, okay. Uh, right. Someone wants to know where you got that awesome shirt. Ah. Yeah, that's probably best. All right, so <laughs> this is the only monetary <laughs> value I get from creating clickers <laughs> magnets is having a clicker shirt. So that's the only money I'll get from this. So they, they I, whenever you do presentations, if you contact these companies, they will often send like free cards or shirts. You just have to ask, or even sometimes codes for apps. All right, so totally off track. Um, yeah, that's my bad. That was that was on me. Sorry. All right, so video tutorial. Here is, and really, I don't like my videos, but I do like to share ideas, so I have to live with them. Uh, here is really quick, a couple minutes of me explaining the system. Uh, probably much better than hearing me talk about it right now. Can you um, unplug your computer headphones real quick? We can't hear it. How about now? Just say striking with hands for spike ball, and then the categories with A being a wow for a report card which comes off as a one for the students. Unfortunately, with clickers, you have to stay A through D. So I just have to remember that a four is a wow and a one would be a D. So now I come over here. Now, students have placed their magnets where their learning is, and I have something that would be displayed on the movie screen or papers could be in their hands for the progression of levels. 
what they have to do to progress. 20 consecutive catches, 20 catches while moving around, blah, 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 so stuff like that. Then I, at the end of class, they have to make sure that their clickers, magnets, are set up so that the numbers are up in the right category. So if they're at two, they have two up. Three, a three and a four, they have the four up. Now for them, it was a little confusing at first because I, silly me, set up the levels like this. So I, I should have done something else, but it's a learning experience for me. So now I basically will scan And done. So I have everyone in. Uh, basically, six of them would be an A grade level, eight of them at a B, nine at a C, and one at a D. So I could use that information uh, to further develop how I'm going to teach, what we need to work on, maybe the progressions were too hard, and use that to move forward for me and have evidence of their learning. So there it is, and I hope that everyone can use this. It's really fast and efficient, and it actually keeps the kids really on task and engaged because they're kind of directing their own learning. All right, Mike, question yep. for you, buddy? Yep. So um, what's up, Matt Pomeroy? He was just saying, like, how we thought his students in middle school might mess with other people's work. Um, or anything have you had any experience with that or any idea like a good way to to manage that situation um, in case someone switched someone's magnet or something well, yeah you know it's funny we always have these conversations uh, can you hear me well yeah we can hear you can you switch to your uh, your person screen for a second yep. Yep, yep. looking good there you go all right there we go so we always have these conversations, I feel like, in everything with the gamification. Uh, you know, it comes down to really building a good culture. Uh, we do have grade level outcomes and standards for uh, respecting each other's learning and things like that. And really starting the year off with uh, focusing on that, the, the social and, and personal responsibility, and really making them understand how important it is. Uh, I personally haven't really had any issues with them. You know, sometimes a kid will knock someone else's magnet off and you just have to kind of model for them over and over. Oh, so if it drops and you have no idea where it was, can you ask uh, Lisa uh, where her magnet was at and fix it for her? And once they, they I modeled that for them and showed them how it works, it was like they didn't think of that themselves. They, they did pretty well with, oh, hey, it dropped over here. Tell me where it went. Oh, I was at level four. All right. So that's you know the only thing that you have to watch out for is they, they, sometimes they have clumsy hands. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's all about the character, and you can't prevent everything from happening. But um, you know, I mean, with the 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 right climate and the positive atmosphere, I think a lot of those things can uh, be prevented. Yeah, I I wish there was a, a magic bullet for all this, but uh, you know, they usually they're so engaged with this type of learning, and and the fact that it's all you know voice and choice, and they're kind of directing their own learning, and it's autonomous that they often will don't even think of the behavior th ideas that they might come up with if they were bored. So they're usually so focused on getting over there, putting their magnet in the right spot, and getting back to the learning uh, so they can advance that uh, really, for me, hasn't been a huge issue. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, buddy. Sure. Keep it rolling. All right. Deal. Moving on. All right, so uh, some traditional ways to use the regular clickers was your assessment questions. So for me, what type of throw is best if you are cl really close to your teammate, A, B, C, D, just regular clickers, questions that you would use. You can still do that with clickers magnets. That doesn't change anything. They can either hold it or, of course, you have to be a little bit closer. Um, it is, they scan from about maybe seven, eight feet away at the size that most people have. Um, but they could just leave them on a board somewhere with the answers that you have as an exit ticket or as an exit ticket, even just how they were feeling that day. So if they were feeling, wow, I had an incredible day. Um, and for me, I usually have the rubrics up there so they know what a wow is or a good job, if they had any behavior warnings. And they could just leave it where they thought their learning was that day. So you're hitting more of the effective domain. So those are some of the ways that you can definitely um, put them in there in, into the regular lessons.
But now for me, the real power uh, I feel is when the students are using them to kind of chart their own self-paced progressions that you would use sort of like, um, I'll show you a couple examples right now. So they have a lot of sometimes choice in what they're doing in uh, what equipment they're using and they're really regulating their own learning. It's, it's really, I was shocked at how great it worked, um, at least at the elementary level for me where I was at, but I know others at other levels have had a lot of success as well. So here you have like soccer pass quest, uh, an idea I got from another area where the kids will go through um, these different levels and on the board, you can have whatever you want the, the levels to be. Uh, it might be that um, for if you're using a, a wow, getting there, obviously if they can get to um, seven or eight at the bottom where they're kicking it really well, that would be a wow in, in, before that, all the different categories. Uh, but really the best thing about this is it's all up to you and your culture and what you want them to get out of the learning um, for the different levels. So the students really tear through this, uh, this content and, and it's just amazing to see them going back and forth and, and tracking that learning uh, so they can see what's important and how it progresses naturally. Another thing that I had done after um, being at a uh, teaching games for understanding session in Boston where they were kind of leading up to spike ball with a, a ball and a hoop. And I brought it back and put that up for the students. I would project it on the, on a movie screen for them to chart with a partner, uh, sometimes a third person, if you have to, if they don't break down evenly. And once they completed a task, they would go and move their clickers magnet on the whiteboard to show me where they were at with the learning. So it's not always just a rating uh, for them. Sometimes it's just to show you, where they are with the learning like joey had originally intended so that he could see where they were so they're always notifying you uh, what part of the learning process they're involved in and if you see kids kind of falling back a little bit this informs you to go over there and see if they need some help whereas if you didn't see the levels on the board and you just looked at your gym of them moving around you may not have any idea uh, where they are with the learning so this is really a great tool for informing you how the learning is going for each student um, you have same thing like the soccer quest. Can I ask a question real quick? Yeah, definitely. Hello, Brian DeVore. So how often do you use these? Um, I know people in the back channel are talking about this. Do you do this daily or is this something that you do like every other day in a, a unit? Can you address that real quick? Yeah. Um, you know, I started this late last year. So uh, I use it for probably 50% of my lessons at the time. It's really not like I'm showing you these nice awesome looking, um, you know, the, the aesthetically pleasing comic life created uh, things that maybe people don't have time for, but you saw in my original video, it was just uh, with a dry erase marker, putting the levels in. So you could do it within minutes, really, uh, whatever your lesson is, just write it up on the board, different categories that you want. Um, and it can be used in every lesson and it really shouldn't take that much more time in the Plickers app itself. You could just put like for this example right here catching um, catch quest and then you'll know that when you collect that data at the end this is where they were with the catch quest learning or how far they got or how far they advanced um, so it can be something as simple as that so really shouldn't take more than you know minutes to kind of set it up differently than how you normally would so i don't know if that answers or helps out i think so buddy thanks yep and as i go along throughout you know the year coming up now, I'm just going to add that much more to my collection. Of course, and the best thing about us as phys ed teachers, we share so much on social media. I pulled stuff from others. Like this catch quest wasn't originally my idea. I just recreated it from someone else. So people share out and um, it just kind of adds to your own collection that much faster. And the last thing to share out is the same idea where they there with partners working on uh, progressions for um, hand striking and having them just go back and forth and keep track of that learning. I really thought that was uh, powerful for them uh, throughout the year. All right, so now the self-paced progressions uh, in our collected folder, I do have them in there as well for people to get started to help out, um, not in all different content area, you know, the, the um, units you would do, but we're trying to build it up slowly. All right, now here's where I got a great idea from uh, Ryan Armstrong. A lot of people probably know it, the, the Ninja Belt jump roping. 
and it is kind of gamified. So I want to show you guys a demo video of how I use, just printed out the papers, not that hard, just um, stuck them to the whiteboard. And this uh, really was extremely powerful uh, for the students. I wanted to show you how I combined jump rope, ninja belt, gamification from Ryan Armstrong and my clickers magnet system so that we can assess where students are for the learning. So here we have white belt, they have to do five total jumps. And then you can see the clickers magnets are gonna match the category that they're in for each belt. So if they are down in blue, purple, or brown, I consider that a three for our grading scale, and a four if they hit red or black. So if they're in the four category, their clickers four should be up. And then they move through the categories uh, one by one. They can't skip belts, so they have to do each one um, independently before they can move on to the next belt. Now I've given them some options of displayed up here, whole bunch of variations, different variations on a, a poster right there. Here is our jump rope tree. Now over here I've placed more options for them. So they have a lot of different choices on how they're gonna perform today. And up on top I have all the shaped GLOs, the grade level outcomes, so that we have those standards up there for the students and their learning, along with the essential questions and all that great stuff. All right, then I'll add some footage from students at the end of this. All right, so aside from the boy at the end who was jump roping where he shouldn't have been, I was just so excited about the whole process, um, let him get away with that one. So um, all right, let's go on to the next one. So now that was how we use it. Um, saw some of the student learning going on and the actual students placing the magnets in there and they just bounced back and forth. It was like worker ants almost. All right, so now uh, really this works well with a lot of other systems. You have a uh, solo taxonomy where basically, uh, if you don't know what it is, they go through different levels of understanding um, what they're learning in class. So basically, uh, I know how to do this one thing. I know how to uh, toss a ball up and catch it, a multi-structural. Now you can start to see how, uh, like with juggling, multiple things moving at once, how it would tie together, uh, relational, seeing, seeing if it, uh, how it would relate to other things they would be doing in class, uh, and also the extended abstract, being able to kind of create their own things or ideas or how to modify the games um, based on the learning. So it's just different levels of learning. And now with, uh, basically when I had done Chinese jump rope, I was trying to blend this hybrid of, okay, we got the skills going. I want them to help other students advance before they can go to certain levels. So they're responsible for their uh, Chinese jump rope partners learning on top of also having to answer questions for understanding at certain levels that were kind of tied to the solo taxonomy idea. So uh, they basically put their magnets on the superheroes to show me what level they were at. And this was again, projected up took almost no time to create this in comic life and uh, be set for the class for the week uh, for different grade levels. So it worked out really well. Hey, Mike. Yes. Question for you, buddy. Um, do you incorporate plickers into class craft or you know, gamification? And like, how do you, if you do, how do you go about doing that? Actually, that was a good question. Uh, interestingly, I kind of started to fizzle out on uh, the class craft, I would say just around March um, and decided that I was gonna back off just a little bit. I, I went so full steam for the year. I feel like the students were kind of already uh, just not feeling it anymore. So it's one of those situations where you just have to 
kind of make changes if, if things are not working. So I ended up backing off and then the Plickers magnets kind of took off after. So really never had a chance to combine them, to be honest. Although I, I could see it definitely working because the Plickers magnets, if you're using them for like grading purposes, just like any other standard base grading, uh, the, the gamification itself, the learning, the experience points they would get throughout class for doing the, whatever your content is really is tied to the grading anyway. So the Plickers magnets, I, I don't see why it would ever be a problem tying them together. Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I don't know if anyone, I had to put this picture in here when I was doing the Chinese jump rope because I, I used to have this VHS tape um, to help uh, the kids understand what Chinese jump rope was. Um, so basically I wanted to show how uh, they worked it out with the Chinese jump rope heroes. Hi, this is Mike Janicola, Viz at Depot on Twitter. And for this week's lesson, uh, we're going to do some Chinese jump rope. And I've been using the Plicker as magnets. And I wanted to kind of break it down into uh, more of a solo taxonomy feel, trying to make sure that I get a nice blend of everything so they have the understanding um, while also working on personal and social responsibility. So they are going to follow the progression that I have set up for them. And each level has certain criteria, the rubrics, to get to the next level. We have some just beating a level in the Chinese jump rope routine, also at certain points checking for understanding, and I added in some reliance on getting their partners to a higher level as well so that they have to think about others, which will hopefully work on empathy. And at some point down in the later categories, they have to create their own routine. So you tie that into the levels here with the superheroes. And once they beat the level, they put their magnet in. I've already covered that in the past. And now we, I have the Chinese jump ropes spread out around the room. So they have their own areas. And also, it's always nice to have a nice visual for them for the levels for our Chinese jump rope here, which is ankle for level one, shins or calves for two, level three and knees, level four is thighs. And I've found that for safety, we, uh, we stay there and don't really go any higher. And then for our grade level outcomes, you can see why we're doing it. And they really tend to enjoy this. So hope someone tries it and it works out for you. My students really love this. <laughs> All right, so again, they're they're bouncing back and forth so much. Uh, the engagement level has been pretty phenomenal. Um, the other thing that this ties in really well with is, and I showed you uh, again the, what I got from Shape Boston with the the session on spike ball it was doing it with all the TGFU concepts to, for the kids to kind of show uh, where their learning is. You could even have small magnetic whiteboards at each of the areas if they're doing small sided games they can keep track of it on their own and you can just walk around and see uh, where they're at with the learning. So it ties in for those of you who really don't know much about uh, TGFU, I'm going to guess a lot of people do by now uh, how to like game sense, having the kids go through questioning and learning the, the understandings of how to do the uh, not really necessarily individual sports as much as broader concepts that they can apply to all other similar um, situations, which is pretty neat stuff. All right, so the um, one big thing that I got pushback on was uh, folks were worried about how anonymous this was with the learning and if students, and then we did have the question here about, you know, the students bothering each other or bothering their magnets or um, maybe teasing anyone about the level that they're at. So I wanted to discuss that real quick uh, from what I've uh, seen of my experiences and knowing about the 
how, how it all works in our standards. So, you know, plickers themselves are generally an anonymous thing. Even you, you can see the, the child putting it on the board and someone could memorize someone else's number if they really wanted to go out of their way and do that. But for the most part, they're bouncing back and forth so quickly. They're not really um, involved with one another as much with that, where they're, they're teasing or focused on others. Uh, usually they're so happy to get back to what they're doing. They don't have time to really think about it. Um, but no system is perfect. And I'm sure that, you know, it comes down to building your, your class culture. Um, and let's face it, in phys ed, they all naturally see you know, where they fit in with everyone else with their skills. That's just not something you can hide very easily, no matter how you set up your class. They, they kind of have an idea of where they all fit in anyways. Uh, so really, to me, what's important is to create that uh, great class culture. Uh, see, I, I even put it in here, standard 4.4. You want to have them learn how to accept the differences among uh, their fellow students in development, maturation, uh, the varying skill levels. You really want to spend that first few weeks of school going over uh, all that personal and social responsibility, how everyone's at a different level, you have students that are at a different reading level. Some of you are above grade level, below grade level, at grade level, all these different level books that you guys read in class. And you have to explain that it's no different um, in physical education. Everyone's at a different level. And that level might be different for um, every single different skill or outcome that we're working on in class. You know, Some of them might be amazing at basketball, but you know, when it comes to soccer, someone else completely different. Uh, who would be the most skilled in class. So really just building that culture, uh, which is important, not even for Plickers Magnets, but for pretty much anything you're going to do, really focusing on that. And I personally, I have 425 students, and I really haven't noticed an issue with anyone, not a single incident last year. And of course, now I'm trying to knock on wood because I know something's going to come up this year. But really, it was I was really impressed with um, how this actually brought them more together and got them a better understanding of the differences than any kind of strife that you would think. Um, so I already shared there about the, the different levels. Um, so now I wanted to <clears throat> mention that the I had spoken to Plickers not too long ago, and they just like they saw the regular Plickers cards, they really were interested in seeing uh, everything on social media that we've been sharing. They were interested in maybe coming up with an, an official Plickers magnet uh, that they want to sell because obviously they, they have to stay in business. And I thought it was a neat thing for us as PE because they might, um, they might help bring the non-phys ed folks in, into the thinking that, hey, those PE people actually have some pretty good ideas. Yeah, hey, Mike, so, I just want to give you a virtual high five for your amazing idea. And um, before we were on screen, uh, we were just chatting a little bit about ideas and yeah. how, you know, we've got lots of ideas. A lot of us do. And it's all about, you know, taking risks. And uh, not every idea works out the way you want it to. But uh, what you did was awesome, man. So um, every look how it's just an amazing and a phenomenal thing. How many people are benefiting from it? So awesome. And now obviously Plickers is paying really close attention. So way to go. Yeah, I think it's great. Like I said, we you fail at a lot of things, and every once in a while, you you, you have a good idea. And I think it's important that we just keep trying new things and, and not be afraid. Um, you know, I, I pushed it out the first time. The kids are looking at me like, what in the world is this, Mr. Genicola? And then after using it, they it was the best thing they had ever seen in class. So you never know until you try it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and um, we've got about five minutes left, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll keep looking at the tozzle, and there's a lot of good engagement, a lot of good questions, but if you have some more uh, materials you want to share too, feel free. Or No, it's interesting. You, you want, hit me right at one of the last slides uh, where I was going to see if we had any questions, so that was really good timing. Uh, yeah, you know, I try. <laughs> <laughs> We're connected like that, so I, I really wanted to – just make sure I share this out with everyone. It's really amazing. Uh, it's an amazing tool for getting the kids to kind of take control of their own learning. I think that's important. And this is an easy way to do that. It's just not all that much extra work. So you mentioned, Mike, that 
you you put it out the first time and your students are wondering what in the world was going on uh yeah. like would you encourage everyone to just kind of be pretty gritty about this process you know and go through it and stick with it because it, it really seems like once you got it going the video and everything it, it was like it was a, a game changer for your students in the way that you were able to record and actually get some really good data yeah you know if you if you don't use clickers at all in your class i would honestly start there obviously so the kids even have an idea of what it is in the first place i had done clickers for over a year before i introduced this so they had an idea already and this was just a smaller version that they had to use in a slightly different way but again if you have never used clickers at all the regular clickers cards i would maybe start there uh, not throw everything on your plate at the same time and, and just take baby steps. You know, it doesn't have to be out and being used in the first month of school. Uh, just kind of take it easy so that you're comfortable with it first. That's the most important thing. I think that, that so much about all different and new ideas that we do as physical educators and you see like Mike, your idea is like the finished polished product, but there is a lot of growing pains along the ways. And I think when people see that, they forget about what you have to what you have to do to get there, right? So yeah, it's so true, man. Well, yeah, I first started out by writing it on the on the whiteboard with dry erase marker, and then every time they moved the the magnets, things would get erased. And I'm like, all right, well, we want to fix that maybe, or at least have it more spread out. So you, it's a learning process. So I just printed them out on papers and just put the paper on the whiteboard and let them put the magnets on those papers. It's just an easy fix um, if it bothers you. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, well, people are continuing to, to chat in the back channel um, about various things. So I definitely, Mike will be in there and he'll come check out. Uh, keep watching. Even if you're not watching live, you ask, answer or ask questions and um, he'll go through it. But um, I just want to thank Mike uh, for being here with us today and sharing his wonderful idea and how uh, physical educators and health educators from around the world can incorpor incorporate this within their classrooms. And um, I'll let Mike speak here in a minute, but I want to encourage everyone also to reflect uh, using Flipgrid. That would be totally awesome. Um, we'd love to hear some video responses uh, from everyone out there about what they learn about um, Flickr magnets today. Uh, so Mike, you want to close it up for us, man? Yeah, definitely. First, thank you for having me on here, and uh, thank you for moderating. You've been so helpful. This is my first time doing it, so I really appreciate your help. Um, this event has been amazing just for the you know the years where I followed along for learning. We, we are an amazing community, and it's great how we help each other. So if you guys need any help, I'm always available. Uh, Twitter is an easy way to get in touch with me at Phys Ed Depot. We'll always help anyone that needs it. And we do have a collected folder with tutorials and ideas and templates, and that's down here in the Tazel. So you always have us to help you out. So please reach out if you need it. For sure. So thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Keep watching the Phys Ed Summit throughout the day. What do you miss? Remember, you can always go back in our archives and watch it. Um, and again, thank you, Mike. And everyone have a great day. Talk to you later. Thank you, everyone.